welcome to Centre Church Online. I think we're at about week 12. Um, we managed to get back to our church building today and hold our first service uh, where we can all gather together. Great time was had by all. Online, we are only going to be having our message for now, for the short term, looking to live stream later on. So our message is brought to you by Pastor Robin. Please enjoy. Uh, feel free to turn up to the, to the church next week, 10 o'clock. Uh, earlier if you can and that's 5 Hooley Road in Parapram Beach have a blessed week enjoy the service thank you oh, thank you oh, bless you bless you all my goodness it's so awesome to see you guys it's just coming back to family isn't it our wider family it's so awesome and we're just worshipping together like that isn't that amazing just just everybody I was just thinking, you know, worldwide, it's, um, churches haven't been able to come together. And I thought, you know, what a plan. You think of the enemy, you know, what he's done to shut down the, the body of Christ. Now, we can worship at home, of course, but there's something powerful when we all come together to worship God, isn't there? And so I just, you know, I believe with what's happening today, what happened here, that just brings so much to the Lord. It really blesses his heart and there's power in corporate worship. So never underestimate the power of coming together and worshipping as one. That's really awesome, isn't it? And it was such a powerful time. Thank you so much, music team, where you are all sitting. It was wonderful. Yeah. So anyway, my spirit... My spirit... Uh, my word is don't feed spirits of fear. And uh, we live in a world, uh, I don't know whether you've noticed, controlled by fear. And uh, God in his word has made it very clear that we are not to submit to fear. Don't give fear to fear. Don't give in to fear. Don't feed fear. Because fear will rob you, it will ruin your life, and it will even destroy your life. Over and over God says in his word, fear not. Be not dis dismayed. Let not your heart be troubled. Fear not, little ones, Jesus said. It's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So over and over, God is always telling us, fear not, fear not, fear not. Absolutely. So as true believers in Jesus Christ, we should be fearless, we should be bold and brave in the battle. Because, you know, we're in a battle daily, really, aren't we? But in the battle, we have to also rest in God. So a true believer in Jesus Christ should be fearless. You know, in the last me message that I preached online, it was the, ri the rising of God's army. And I talked about how that army was to be motivated by faith, by love, operating by faith. It is not an army that is ruled by fear. We cannot be an army. We can never be an effective army if we are ruled by fear. You know, when people, go, when actual armies go into battle, you know, they have to just overcome that fear. And when they get the command, they have to run. They can't just stand where they are, paralyzed with fear. They've got to go into battle. And so as believers, we've got to be strong. We've got to be fearless. And we need to learn to deal to the spirit of fear. Because God wants us winning battles. We'll face battles, but we're overcomers. And we're more than conquerors, aren't we? We're not weak, we're strong. If you feel weak, the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. <laughs> and if you keep saying it, you'll, you'll believe it, you'll start to believe it. And the devil does not want you to say that. He doesn't want you declaring faith. He doesn't want you declaring who you are in Christ Jesus. But you're powerful. You're powerful in him. And you're... you're more powerful than him. He thinks he's got all the power. No, he doesn't. The body of Christ has because Jesus gave it to the body of Christ. And so, you know, we've we got to be fearless in this life. And, you know, at the, at the moment, there is a real battle going on in the spirit realm, if you haven't noticed. You know, right now, there's, in that atmosphere, there's, a, there's battles going on and there is darkness trying to overtake or to main, trying to maintain or take back control of governments, people and nations. But this nation belongs to Jesus Christ. I, I, you know, we've put our stake in the ground on that one. And as far as I'm concerned, this nation belongs to Jesus Christ and to nobody else. 
and uh, Jesus would, they'd love to take Jesus out of this nation. Hey, but body, we're not going to let them, are we? We're not going to let Satan win this one. So what makes it possible for us to be fearless against darkness? It's knowing that Jesus has given us power over all the power of the enemy. Talks about that in Luke 10, 19. He's given us power over all the power of the enemy. In Philippians 4, 6, it says, Be anxious for nothing. Oh, some things? No, nothing. Whatever comes at you, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus. So don't be anxious. Don't lie awake at night worrying about things. Isn't that, seem, that seems to be when the devil really gets a good chance to play on people's minds. You know, you're about to go to sleep and your mind starts tuning over things and, and fretting about things and going through all these scenarios, what if? <laughs> well, what if God is on your side? <laughs> and God is on your side. You know, we, we, well, that song we were singing, he is for us, he's behind us, he's, he's around us, he's in us. And if God is for us, who could be against us, as we heard? Nothing. Certainly not Satan and all his demonic realm. They cannot be against us. They are defeated and, and brought to naught by Jesus Christ. And Jesus has given us all power and all authority over his wicked plans, Satan's wicked plans. So when you do start finding yourself fretting and, and actually feeding what you're doing, you're feeding and you're empowering the enemy. You're feeding the demonic's appetite for fear. They love fear. They, they can smell fear and they like to, they like to get the body of Christ in fear where they, they we, as we release that fear and we're talking fear, they love it. It empowers them and they feed on that. It's, see, when you fear, you're releasing something in the spiritual realm. It's an atmosphere you're creating. And I tell you what, they come and feed on that and they get strong on that. And so, you know, we've got to make sure that at, through our word, we gain power over all the power of the enemy. Don't let the enemy gather power or gain power over you because that's not who you are. You're called to be fearless. You're called to be powerful. And why do you think God put 365 words, scriptures in the, in the word of God about fear not? about not fearing, not being anxious, all of these things. Because for every day of the year, you will have an opportunity to be fearful or anxious about something. So every day, you need to keep the word of God in your heart. So when fear comes against you, use it to defeat the enemy. Pull down his stronghold. Don't let him build a stronghold in your mind. Pull it down with the word of God. You know, I've not been given a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I refuse to fear. I refuse to be anxious. The devil has no power over me. I'm in Christ Jesus. And God is for me. He's not against me. <laughs> okay, so don't be a mouthpiece for fear. Our words create, as you know. And the, word was, the world was created by the word that came out of God's mouth when he created. He created with the word of God. And Satan is after our tongues, absolutely, because that's where the power lies in what we release from our mouths. We are made in God's image. We have the ability to create with words. And Satan wants us speaking fear and hate and offense and division and anger and defeat and sickness and poverty and lack, all the negative stuff. He wants us speaking these things. So then he can take what you've spoken and he can create what you have spoken. So be careful what comes out of your mouth because when, something, when you're speaking contrary to what God wants you to say, you're empowering the enemy to grab those words and create the very thing you don't want to happen. Remember Job said, the fear, thing that I feared came upon me because he was speaking his fear and, this, and Satan could take those words and create the very things he was fearful about. So we need to be very careful what comes out of our mouth. It says in 1 John 4:18 there is no fear in love but perfect love 
cast out fear because fear involves torment. Does it ever? It sure does. You get fearful and you, you become tormented with this horrible feeling and expectation of something bad about to happen. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. See, we, we are to be perfected in God's love. And when we are, are strongly assured of his love for us, and we have a love for him, when we're strongly assured of that love and his desire to bless us and to heal us and to provide for us and to protect us and our family, when something comes against us, because we are confident in his love, faith arises. And so if something comes against you, but you're perfected in the love of God. You know he loves you. You know he cares about you. You know he surrounds you with his love and with his angels. And so when something comes against you to attack you, you we need to refuse to fear because we are perfected in love. We know that God has our back and, we've, and our front and our side and he's all around us and in us. Amen? So, uh, so we don't need to fear. If God is for us, as we sang today, who can be against us? No one can be against us. No demon in hell can be against us. They can try. They can try. But if you're perfected in God's love and you know the love he has for you, then you have nothing to fear. Because his word is our, that's the truth. The word is truth. What he might speak to you is not true. Satan will tell you lies. He's the father of lies. He can't do anything else but lie. That's why I don't listen to the news half the time, because I'm sick of the lies. <laughs> okay, so don't listen to the Satan. Don't listen to his lies about you. Don't listen to his fear tactics. Be, on, be aware of his, uh, his strategies. Okay, so um, in Romans 8.31 it says, which we were singing about today, if God is for us, who can be against us? No one, if we stay, stay in faith and don't fear. So I'd just like to go to Mark chapter 5 and verse 21. <clears throat> just want to read these scriptures here. Just, I won't go through all of it, but in Mark 5, uh, 21, let's start at 21. Now, when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and when he was by the sea. So imagine this, there's a multitude. Now, a multitude is not just a few hundred people. It'll be thousands. He's got thousands of people surrounding him. And in verse 22, Behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come. And lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. Did you catch what Jairus just said? He released the answer to his problem, to his critically ill daughter's condition. He released creative words of healing by faith, something with which Jesus could work with. Now, if he had come to say, oh, my daughter's dying, my, he's dying, she's going to die, he would have given nothing for Jesus to work with, but he released words of faith. He, he released words that were bringing healing to his daughter, even though he may not have realized what he was doing. But what he did was powerful. He released those creative healing words by faith. So that just want you to bear that in mind there. Now, we'll go on. So we've got this whole multitude, and Jesus, he, he said... Um, you know, he said he went with him, was going to come with him anyway. So there's this great th crowd around about them. And in the meantime, while they're walking there, and it's hard enough walking with, a, you know, few people around, isn't it? Sometimes you can't get that far, go that fast. But if you've got thousands of people around you, you know, it's hard to run, it's hard to go fast. But anyway, so he's got this great crowd thronging around him, and, uh, and a certain woman, I mean, we all know this story, she had a flow of blood for 12 years. She had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd. 
For she said, uh, uh, came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, she had already said this in her heart, she had already set in motion what she was going to receive. If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. And immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Now, Jairus is, you know, they're moving along with Jesus, pretty hard moving through the crowd. This woman had touched him and Jesus stops and says, who touched me? And, you know, <laughs> who touched me? And, you know, that's a, bit dark. that's a funny thing to say when you've got thousands of people thronging you. They're pushing against you. You know, they want to they get near to him. But he knew one person touched him in faith because what happened, he felt the anointing go out of him. He had nothing to do with this. He had nothing to do with her healing except that he carried the anointing. Isn't that powerful? He carried the anointing of God. And she pulled on that by faith and it came into her body. Jesus had no part in that, only that he was a carrier of the anointing of God. Now, you need to realize that you are carriers of the anointing of God. You have the anointing within you, the Bible says. What are you doing with that anointing? What are you doing with it? Anyway, so here's this woman, and, and Jesus stops. Now, Jairus is still there. He knows his daughter is at the point of death. He's released faith words, and... Uh, and now Jesus is stopped there. Who touched me? Who touched me? And the disciples are thinking, what are you talking about? Everybody's touching you. He said, no, but I know someone touched me. By f he didn't say by faith, but that's what he was meaning. Someone touched me because I felt anointing go from me. And of course, that lady, she, she, she came and talked to him. Now, this is what I love about Jesus. She, you know, it says in verse 33, he, he said to her, oh no, not 33, Oh, yeah, 33. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Now, women can talk. They have been known to talk. <laughs> and they love detail. And when I say men are headliners, women are detail. They like the detail. If you're going to give a story, tell us the whole thing. How was, how was work today? Good. No, that's not enough. <laughs> we want to know why was it good? <laughs> why was today good? So here this woman, she had touched the hem of his garment and, uh, and now she's telling him the whole 12-year story. <laughs> How long would that 12 years is a long time? You couldn't tell that in five minutes. So she, we don't know how long she was there, but I would say she was there quite a while. Jesus is not at all worried. He's, he's, he, everything's in control. He's not, worried. he's not worried about Jairus' daughter. He knows words of faith have been released. And so here he is, and he lets her tell the whole story. Then he blesses her and, and sends her on away. And then, and this too, what I love about him, is that he was up, here's just thousands of people, this woman's healed, and he's on his way to to this home, thousands of people, it says he, he, he dismisses them somehow. He just, you know, <laughs> how do you do that? You know, That's just the power of Jesus, isn't it? That they just were more or less dismissed and he went on his way. But as they were going on the way, um, okay, in verse 35, I think. Um, sorry, I'm a bit lost here. Yet while he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. What a nice way to say it, eh? Your daughter is dead. You know, not very nice. But anyway, why trouble the teacher any further? Two things. Two things Jairus could have done. They came to put, Satan came to put fear in his heart and take take away his faith confession, what he had confessed. And also the other thing was he could have put resentment in his heart towards Jesus. Well, your fault, Jesus, you took too long. He, both ways, he could have had two reactions. Those two reactions, spoken his fear out, spoken what they'd said, agreed with what they said, and also got annoyed at Jesus because he took so long. 
But Jesus immediately, while he was still um, he in verse 36, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. Only believe. Only believe what you've released from your mouth. Don't believe anything else that, that I'm going to come there. You said I'll lay hands on her and she shall be healed. So don't only believe. So Jesus dealt with that spirit of fear immediately because he would have undone the, the faith declaration that he had made. And all he needs, all Jairus needs to do is to believe his answer is coming. That's all he needs to do. So um, in Jairus' house, he, and when he came to the house, he took authority. There were crowds there again, crying and, and calling out and, and grieving, and he just put them out. He said, oh, what are you grieving for? The, the girl is just not dead. She's sleeping. And they all mocked him and laughed. And uh, anyway, <clears throat> he refused fear to come into the, to change things. He wouldn't allow fear. He wouldn't allow all those. He put them all out. It's quite amazing. Jesus just takes authority where, wherever he goes. And people don't even know why they're doing certain things. Just move out of the way. So, you know, if we can't say anything positive and in line with what we are believing... If you can't say anything positive, keep your mouth shut. If you have released a faith declaration and, and you can't speak in line with what you declared, I just say keep your mouth shut. Don't allow fear to get you and start to agree with fear. What if? You know, all of these, these scenarios. Keep our mouth shut. Never say it's hopeless. Don't say God can't hear me. Don't say we don't have enough money. Don't say that I can't find a job. Don't say that my children are, are impossible. Don't agree with fear thoughts at all. Don't speak them out because you'll create, Satan will take those words and he'll create the very thing that he wants you to be saying. Okay. Don't say it is impossible. Don't ever say it's impossible. What does it say? If we get with God, with God, all things are possible. So don't say, oh, it's impossible. Oh, it's just impossible. No, with God, all things are possible. Absolutely. So Jesus wouldn't allow Jairus to shift away from what he believed and what he had said. And uh, there was a hold-up, sure, and it took longer to get the answer than expected. How many for you found the answer seemed to take a long time in coming? Don't give up. And fear came to try and steal the word. He'll fear will come and try to steal the word out of your mouth, steal what you're believing for. And fear came to try and steal Jairus' faith, his declaration. And he could have agreed with the fact that his daughter was dead. But he didn't. Jesus put a stop on it straight away. Don't be afraid, only believe. If you're facing a difficult time right now, don't be afraid, only believe. Get to, with God, pray about a thing, declare a thing, and just thank God for the answer. And don't be afraid, only believe. You know, Jairus would have expected that answer to come, you know, right away. He wanted the answer right away. He wanted Jesus to come right away. But he didn't. But the answer did come. You know, sometimes we think we expect the answer to come today. <laughs> or tomorrow, or at least maybe within the hour or, or in the week. But we don't expect to wait too long. We're such an impatient bunch of people, aren't we? <laughs> people are impatient. It's just the way it is these days. We're impatient. But we've got to be patient because some things take longer than others. Absolutely. So don't be, you know, don't be afraid about that. Jesus never said when you play, pray, Believe you receive it and you shall have it in the next hour? No, he didn't say that. Or you shall have it in the week. No, he, never, he didn't tell you how long it would take. So uh, he, there's no time limit on, on praying. There's no time limit on answers coming. But if you believe, you shall receive. Absolutely. If you believe, you shall receive. If you hold on to your confession of faith and believing, you shall receive. It says in Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe you receive them and you will have them. You will have them. 
Not might have them, not may be, but you will receive them. What sort of things can we ask for? He didn't say. He said just whatever things you ask when you pray. Believe you receive them and you will have them. Now I would just like to shift the comma. I want to put shift a comma in that scripture <coughs> to do with pray. See, when you, whatever things you ask when you pray, comma. I want to move that too. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask, comma, when you pray, believe and receive, you receive them and you will have them. That gives a different feel to the whole thing, doesn't it? So if you think, whatever things you ask when you pray, comma, then believe you receive them and you will have them. When do you start believing? It says quite, really, it's saying this, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe you receive them. The moment you pray, believe you receive the answer and you will have them, future, future tense. So when you pray uh, now, right now, present tense, you will have them future tense. So just because you don't get the answer immediately doesn't mean that God didn't hear your prayer and the answer is not on the way. You've got to hold on to your believing and don't let fear come at you. Don't believe the fear thoughts and certainly do not speak the fear thoughts. If fear comes at you, you just you hit back. I have not been given a spirit of fear but a power of love and of a sound mind. You see, fear distorts your mind. It does something to your mind. Absolutely, it does. It changes things. I think, believe it, it even changes your brain. It does something that affects you. So we've got to know that when we pray, we believe we receive. Believe the moment you pray, not an hour later, not next week. You believe you receive the answer the moment you pray. And don't wait till you see the answer before you believe. Believe when you pray, okay? And you will receive the answer. <clears throat> Hebrews 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. In other words, what you're hoping for, your faith gives substance to it. It brings it in, into the reality. It's the evidence of things not seen. But notice it says, now faith is. Faith is always now in the present tense. It's not a future thing. You, you're asking God for something. You know, this is how I would do it. If, <clears throat> if you're a little bit unsure about it, get scriptures, think about them, meditate them on them for a while. And then when you're ready, pray and ask and believe you receive when the moment you pray. And God says, and you will have it. So the spirit of fear will try and prize the answer from you. Absolutely. He will, he'll, um, he'll put negative, frightening thoughts in your mind, symptoms on your body, cause your cash to dry up, anything to prevent you from receiving the answer. He wants to put fear in your mind so that faith cannot work. Faith and fear cannot coexist. If you have faith, and you have fear, one or the other is going to win. They cannot coexist together. And so we are not being given a spirit of fear. Get rid of fear and walk in faith. I walk by faith and not by sight. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not even moved by what I hear. I have laid this before the Lord. I have prayed. I have received. And I thank you, Lord, for the answer. So... <clears throat> As I say, fear feeds and empowers the spirits of fear. Don't feed the demonic. Don't empower them. It's like putting a missile in the enemy's hands to fire against you and destroy you. You know, Jesus Christ, he's our Lord, he's our saviour, he's our commander-in-chief, and through his death on the cross and his resurrection and, uh, thank you, Doug, and uh, his complete victory over all darkness and all the demonic realm. Because of that, it makes it possible for all those who are in Christ Jesus to live fear-free lives. He's done the job for us. We don't have to fight the enemy because he's defeated him. And he says, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. <clears throat> so it's time to put our 
trust 100% in him and in our heavenly father and in the word of God. God's words, they are spirit and they are life. They penetrate the spirit realm. His words work for us, bringing us healing and deliverance and, and freedom, abundance, justice, life and peace and joy and laughter. <clears throat> Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. It says in Deuteronomy 30, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Well, it's a dumb, dumb thing to choose, death and cursing, isn't it? We choose life. <laughs> choose life. And it's in our death and life are in the power of the tongue. What are we saying? What are you speaking? What are you saying to your kids? What are you saying in your situation? Listen to yourself. Listen to what you're saying. Is it faith? Is it by faith or are you motivated by fear? But don't speak fear because you'll feed the spirits of fear and they will, they will pounce on your situation and they will destroy things for you, absolutely. So we, won't, we don't give in to fear. Uh, so we're going to speak faith words, absolutely. And when we speak faith words, that word is working for us. The answer is on the way. And your words also empower the angelic realm, realm so they can go and fight for you. <clears throat> you know, in New Zealand, we love fish and chips. <laughs> I think Plymouth has one of the best fish and chip shops in the world. But I have found another one that actually may have just pipped it. <laughs> Nawi. Um, Nawi, down on, on um, you know, Cape Palliser has got a caravan there, and that lady in there makes the most delicious fish and chips. <laughs> Ain't <Aquin. laughs> The best fish and chips. And so anyway, when you're at the beach, which we like to do with a packet of fish and chips, you notice it won't be long before there's a seagull just sitting close to you, <laughs> eyeing your chips. <laughs> and it's waiting to see if you're going to feed them. If you throw that chip to that seagull, suddenly you're going to be surrounded by heaps of seagulls, all wanting your chips and all wanting to feed on your chips. Don't feed seagulls if you want to enjoy eating fish and chips at the beach. <laughs> now let me say this, the spirits of fear are no different. They wait for the chip, a negative word, a negative fear-filled word that is going to come out your mouth. It squawks in your ear. <laughs> God won't answer your prayer. <laughs> You'll never get your answer. Does that sound like a seagull? I don't know. <laughs> your situation is too bad. I mean, it's hard to sound like a seagull. <clears throat> you will fail. <laughs> you won't recover. You won't get a job. Your children will end up on drugs. All fair things, they squawk at you like those seagulls squawk. They're wanting a chip. And then you start hearing, <laughs> and they he you're hearing these words, and then you start to speak it. And it's like you've, you've thrown chips to the demons. <laughs> and they come and they pounce on it. And they're not satisfied with one chip. They'll keep at you and keep at you and keep at you till you're so full of fear and you're speaking fear out all over the place. And you will not enjoy eating fish and chips ever again at the beach. <laughs> See, you have got to fight back with the word of God. If those fear, that fear is coming at you, you get the word of God. Say, I won't listen to that. I have not been given a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. I have released my faith, and I believe, I believe what God has said is true. So you've got to fight back with the word. Start firing missiles of faith. Rather than the enemy firing missiles at you, you turn them back. You start firing missiles at the enemy and defeat him. Defeat that doubt. Defeat that fear. Defeat what he's trying to do to you because you have not been given a spirit of fear but a power of love and of a sound mind. And the word says, whatsoever things I desire, when I pray, believe. When I pray, I believe I receive it and I shall have it. So devil, stick that where it is. 
Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, okay, let's just pray for a minute. <clears throat> I think we're better after us. Oh, <laughs> after that, Father, I just thank you for everybody here, and Father, I just pray that we will be a fearless army for the kingdom of God. We will fight doubt. We will fight unbelief. We will fight the spirits of fear. We will not feed them at all. Not at all. We will fire missiles of faith at them. We will defeat them on every side, Father God. Everywhere we put our foot, Father God, we declare that we are the blessed, we are the healed, we are the mighty ones, we are the warriors of faith. We will not fail in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, thank you what you said, whatsoever things I desire, when I pray, I believe I receive them and I shall have them in the name of Jesus Christ. <coughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Father. So we're going to finish with a song, I believe. Looks like it. That's good. <laughs> um, Father, I just I thank you, Lord, for all of these people. I thank you, Lord, that truly faith does grow in their hearts. I pray the blessing of God upon them. I pray for your healing anointing, just this be all over this place right now, that your healing power will be upon each and every person. Just say, I receive, whatever you, I say, just, if you need healing, just say, I receive it. God hears. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. We just release your healing anointing here, Father. On every person that needs healing, Father, you bring healing to their bodies. Peace to their minds, Father. Fill their minds with peace. And all hope in believing. All hope in believing. You cover them with your shield. You cover them with your wings of healing. You surround them, Father God. You love them. You love each and every one that's in this place. Father, I thank you for it. I bless you for it. And if there is anyone here that does know Jesus Christ, just pray this prayer after me. Perhaps we'll all just pray this prayer. Father God, I thank you that you sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for me. He bore all my sin. He took it for me so that I don't have to carry that sin and the penalty of sin. I invite you, Jesus, to come into my life. I make you my Lord and my Saviour. And I'm so grateful that you died for me. Amen. Amen. Amen.